Happy holidays everybody! Today, Aaron and I are unboxing a little gem. This is the ASUS PA27UCXK monitor and it's really something rather special and we're going to find out more about it, aren't we? First, it has this special box where we just have to pull out these little plugs. Okay, there we go. It takes a big... And we do the other side. Can you just take those over there? It's all around my side. There we go. Manage your toes. And just along the bottom there. Okay, let's try that again, shall we? Lift it up. And lift it up. Whoa. Whoa. There's something in there. There's something in there as well, isn't there? Let's see what's in here first, shall we? Hey, I've got a big, big, big house. Yeah, do you want to open that one for me? Yeah, thank you. This is the calibration report. This is great. I love this. Instead of having a built in probe, which is always a bit of a compromise, uh, this monitor ships with an i1 display pro for the monitor. So already set up for the monitor. And that's great because this is really the minimum sir, probe that I would recommend. Uh, sir, it's a tri stimulus sir, I just meter. Found something. Okay, do you want to open that up for me? Uh, this is the minimum I would recommend for a really good um, professional quality calibration. So the fact that it comes with that and the fact that because it's an external probe, you can put it right in the center of the monitor and measure it in its best place. Uh, that's really cool. So we like that and we'll put that down here. It also comes with the monitor hood. That's what I got. Okay, yep. Yeah, this is the yeah. cable tidy for the back. Yeah, that's the cable We're going to need that a bit later, so we'll put that there. Let me just it. There we go. Oh, Cable, so I'll hand these out to you and you can lay them out for me. Let's see what we've got. First of all here we have USB-C cable. So it takes a USB-C input, we like that. We have the power cable, we need those. We have uh, HDMI 2, remember this is a full-on HDR monitor. So it needs HDMI 2 to be able to support HLG, HDR10, uh, and Dolby Vision. I this, by the this way, is, is also the... heavy over here. Yeah, that is heavy, that's the stand. This is the first 27-inch display to come with Dolby Vision firmware inside. So this is a Dolby Vision screen. We've also got display port and a USB-C to USB-C cable. Next up, we want the stand out here. So let's see what that does. Oh, oh it's heavy, Aaron. This is a good solid stand and we'll put that down. Let's move this back a little bit. Put that down there. Would you like to unwrap that for me? In the past, I haven't really been very keen on 27 inches because they're typically 3K. But this 27 inch is a true 3840 2160p display. So we're going to get pixel for pixel on UHD content. So that's, that's really awesome. And the thing that makes this super interesting to me is that my UCX is the older version, which doesn't have the off-axis optimization. Dad, and this one comes me. with off-axis optimization. It's a work of art to stand. Just take that off. And again, we'll give it a bit of a snip. I'm doing it. Okay. You're doing it? Okay. I see that glass Yeah, on. I see that. Do you want to pull that off for me? There you go. There we go. So the pro art stand. And let's have a look at the monitor. That's the monitor. That's the monitor, isn't it? So yes. I'll get it out. We'll turn it over so we can have a look at the back. And uh, do you want to pull that off for me now? Pull, pull, pull. There we go. Whoa, Move it to one side. Stuff. And let's turn this down. And let's have a look at the guts. So as you can see, for a true 4K monitor, true UHD 3840 display, this is a little gem. Nice and tidy, very, very tidy. But I'm going to measure it because the 32 inch is 75 centimeters across. 
Let's go all the way across. So this comes in at 65, so a full 10 centimeters smaller on my desk. That's very cool. So over here we have the menus, we have the little thumb, wheel, thumb switch here to navigate the menus and then the shortcuts for inputs, power, um, HDR and so on. If we have a look at the... The last thing to do is put the stand on. Yep, we'll do that in a second. Before we put the stand on, let's have a look at the inputs. So power, separate power module here as well as the standby switch. Then we've got uh, two HDMI ports, a display port, um, the USB port which is used for firmware upgrades, which is fantastic because they're very regular with their updates. Then we have USB-C and four USB ports. So this is quite a handy hub. You can plug your panels in here, you can plug the probe in here. Um, really, really nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the display stand on. And just slot that in there. And there we have it. Oops. There we have it. Asus monitor. We're ready to plug it in. So let's just go and do that. Okay, before we get up close and personal, I just wanted to show you the difference in size between the 32 inch and the 27 inch ECX. As you can see, there's a considerable space saving with the 27 inch, but it's still got the same number of pixels, same amazing contrast, dynamic range, same picture presets. Let's get close and have a look. Okay, let's turn off the 32 inch. First off is the energy title and uh, and this tells us that it's using about 46 watts something to remember with HDR monitors is if they want to be bright they need power so if you see like a low energy rating on an HDR display that should ring some alarm bells over here we can peel this off it says it's mini LED so the 27 inch has 576 zones but it has this off-axis optimization, so that's going to be interesting to look at that. It's quantum dot technology, so we can expect really good color calibration. It covers DCI-P3, Rec 2020, of course it's a true 10-bit display for HDR. <clears throat> color accuracy is better than Delta 1, uh, so that's, that's awesome. It supports USB-C. Now, when I was connecting this up, I tried a Thunderbolt cable and it didn't work. I'm running it from my Mac Mini via a USB-C cable. Trick here with a lot of monitors is use the cables in the box. If you start trying to mismatch cables, you may find that you're not getting an image just because the cable's not right. Um, so I'm connected USB-C and I've also connected some HDMI uh, cables as well. And the other thing that they mention is it's Dolby Vision which means that it has the Dolby Vision firmware in it, and if you have Dolby Vision content, it will automatically detect it, and it will read the metadata and use the content mapping unit for the corrections. So we'll pull the light off. Now, at first I was worried that a 4K monitor this size would be hard to read, so you'll see here that in my system preferences for displays, I'm going to select 3840. So that uh, gives me a lot more real estate in here, but actually I found that that's quite usable. So we're going to do that. I can already see that the off-axis optimization is giving me very sharp edges on the grayscale against black. Um, so that's really nice. Now it ships in standard mode, so we need to change the color space. And here's the menu for that. So it's in standard mode. We have we have sRGB, Adobe RGB, 2020. That's the standard dynamic range 2020. DCI-P3, DICOM for medical work, so we won't need that one. And Rec 709. That's before we get to the HDR formats. Let's just put it into 709 for starters. There we go, so that's my 709 calibration. It came with a calibration report, so it's already better than Delta 1. 
I will put a calibration system on it um, and, and check it. I found I normally can get it even a little bit better, even though it's perfect. Um, it's Kalman ready, it's Lightspace ready, so you can plug those in and they are remote operated. Uh, you can also download the free ProArt calibration software, uh, which is great, right? Because you you get the probe with it, you get the X-Rite probe with it, you get free calibration software. So with this display, you're up and running immediately, even if you don't have any other calibration software. We'll just quickly go down the menus in here. So we looked at the settings for different display formats. You have a blue filter. You have uh, a good calibration setup here, color management system. So brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, color temperature, gamma. But more importantly, you can go in here and do your calibration tweaks. So we've got hue, six axis hue, six axis saturation, RGB gains and RGB offsets. So that's what I use if I need to tweak the, the LUT file. Um, oh, this is a relatively new feature, the input range settings. So you can now choose auto, full, video range, or uh, 70 range. So that's kind of nice. And then volume, so you can get audio through this from the HDMI cable, uh, picture in picture, and of course the input settings. Now, what I did is I have attached my Muridio 6G pattern generator to HDMI 2. So let's switch over to that. There it is. Okay, so this is a grayscale, and I thought this would be a good way, first of all, to look at the different HDR settings. So I'm now going to come in and choose an HDR space. So you can see I've got PQDCI. PQ2020 and HDR HLG. So I'm going to put it in 2020 just to kind of show you these modes. In each of these settings, you have optimized clip and basic. So at the moment, it looks like it's clipped. Okay, so there we go. So you can see in the clipped mode, here we go, PQ clipped it's cutting off at around 1000 nits. And if I go into an optimized mode, what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me a roll off to go above 1000 nits. So you can see, you just get a hint of the grayscale all the way up to white, but after 1000 nits, it's quite pale, but it's there. And if we go into the basic mode, That's basically tone mapping the full 10,000 nits into a 1,000 nit display. So for grading work, I'm going to be working with clip. PQ clip. And there we go, there's my 1,000 nit clip, so that, that's great. If I was wanting to check values above 1,000, maybe doing camera tests or something, I would use the PQ optimized. Uh, before we go back to 709, there's another pattern that I always like to look at. There we go, finally. Um, so this pattern is little star, little dots on again a black background. And that can be quite difficult for these um, single layer LED screens to handle. What I've seen in a lot of monitors that are, um, have, have good brightness is that when you put this pattern up, the white dots pretty much disappear. But here I'm really happy. Here we've got um, we've got very nice contrast um, against the background. If I go to the next one, um, this gives me a really good feel for the static contrast of the display. And it's got this really three-dimensional look about it. Even though it's white dot, it's white squares on a black background, it looks like lattice work. Um, so a really nice display to be working with for HDR work. Okay, let's go back to 709 and back to my 
There's a shortcut for the inputs, by the way, so I'm just going to trigger USB. And we're back here. And what I want to do now is just bring up Resolve to check the interface. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's great. At, at 4K, I can, I can read the time code. I can read the tools. I can see the scopes. And so this is going to be, this is going to be great. So there you have it. That's the PA27 UCXK. Uh, it's great to see ASUS doing all of this work, not just on building better displays, but listening to feedback and improving the menus all the time. Uh, so I'm going to have a lot of uh, good times with this monitor. Great. Don't forget to check the Final Color website, and I hope to see you on the next video.